So I hope you had a great three-day weekend. We're right back in school on Tuesday. It feels like a Monday, but really it's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, October 16th. And today we're continuing, continuing right along in our math lessons with Module 2, Lesson 7. As you recall, last week we were working on area model, right? And we we're talking about how the area model is the same thing as the standard algorithm. Today we're just going to continue along with more of the same. We're going to be doing more area model. But um, we're going to be talking about how the area model is the same thing as the distributive property. Okay, and then we're also going to add on an extra step. We're going to be using estimation to help us decide if our product is reasonable to make sure that our answer is in the right zone. Okay. Start by writing down the problem. 524 times 136. Now, before we even do the area model or the standard algorithm, let's use some estimation. About how big should our product be? Well, 524 is pretty close to what number? 500, okay. And 136 is pretty close to what number? 100. So this should be kind of about the same size as 500 times 100. So what's 5 times 1? And how many factors of 10 do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's add 4 factors of 10. So our answer should be pretty close to 50,000. Should our actual answer be bigger than 50,000 or smaller than 50,000? Because we made, do you see how from 524 we made it smaller to 500 and 136 we made it smaller to 100? So we know our actual answer should be larger than 50,000, but it should be in the ballpark range in the zone of 50,000. Go ahead and draw that estimation. Make sure you write that down because that's going to help us make sure our answer is reasonable. Okay, now let's do an area model. Area models always start with what shapes? Rectangles. Rectangles. Good. Okay. Now, our first factor is 524. How many parts should I break that up into? Three. three. Okay, so go ahead and divide it into three. And we know the first part's going to be 500. The next part's going to be 20. And the last part's going to be four. Our next factor across the top is 136. How many parts are we going to divide that into? Also three. Good. 100, 30, and 6. Now we know that we need to find each individual area. Is this any harder than what we did yesterday? And by yesterday, I mean last week? Mm -hmm. No. But are there more little individual sections? So what does that mean? More chances to make what? Mistakes. Silly mistakes. So that tells us we need to be extra what? Yeah. Careful. One way that we can be extra careful is to actually write out the multiplication. Some of us are not writing it out and we're just thinking in our head, like 500 times 100 is 50,000. But the thing is, that's fine, but if you're doing it all in your head, might you make a mistake? Mm -hmm. So one really good way to not make a mistake is to actually write it out. It's very simple, it doesn't take that long. Okay, so how do I find the area of this part? Well, I have to do 500 times 100. I can think 5 times 1 is 5. And then there's four factors of 10. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now let's move on to this square right here. How do I find the area of that? Well, I have to do 20, because it's 20 over here, times 100. And I think in my head, notice how I wrote it out inside the box so that I don't make silly mistakes. I think to myself, what's two times one? And how many factors of 10 are there? So let's add three, very good. Now, let's find the area of this part right here. I have 4 times what? Which is? Very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next middle column. What's the length that I just outlined in blue? 500. What about this one up here? So to find the area, I have to do 500 times 30. I can think to myself, what's 5 times 3? And how many factors of 10 are there? So let's add three factors of 10. So the answer is 15,000. What's the length of the area I just outlined in blue? This one right here? Isn't it the same as this one here? So it is 20. What about the top one? It's the same as up here, isn't it? 20 times 30. So I can think to myself, what's 2 times 3? How many factors of 10? So the answer is the partial product there is 600. Okay, next, down here, I have five, 4 times 30. 
which is 120. Very nice. Okay, now let's move on to the last one. This yellow length is how much? 500. What about this one here? Six. So to find the area, do 500 times 6. I can think to myself, what's 5 times 6? Okay, and how many more factors of 10 do I need to add? Two. You know what I'm going to say, right? A lot of times we confuse that 0 and the 30 as one of the factors of 10. Is it one of the factors of 10? No, no it's the product of 5 times 6, right? Very good. Okay, what's the length of this one right here? 20. What about this? So I do 20 times 6. What's 2 times 6? And how many factors of 10? Very nice. Okay, last but not least, I have 4 times, which is? 24. Very nice. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out. In the red column, what do you notice all those factors have in common? I did 500 times 100, 20 times 100, 4 times 100. What do they all have in common? Everyone? See how it's times 100, times 100, times 100. Because basically what I was doing was 524 times 100. Do you agree? Okay. How can I find out what 524 times 100 is? Well, we know that five 524 times 1 is 524, and I could add two factors of 0, right? So it should be 52,400. But could I add that? 50,000 plus 2,000 plus 400. Do you agree? Yes. So underneath your area model, go ahead and show that you're doing 50,000 plus 2,000 plus 400. When you add those, what do you get? 52,000. 400. Yes? My comma is not drawing. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Next, over here, what do these have in common? 500 times 30. 20 times 30. 4 times 30. What do they all have in common? 30. Because I basically, to find this blue section here, I'm doing 524 times 30. Do you agree? Okay. Very nice. Well, and to find that, I could just add 15,000 plus 600 plus 120. Go ahead and do that. 15,000 plus 600 plus 120. When you do that, you get 15,720. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, last but not least, I have fi 500 times 6. 20 times 6. 4 times 6. What do they all have in common? It's because I was doing 524 times 6 over here. You see that? Okay. And again, to find what that equals, you do 3,000 plus 120 plus 24. So 3,000 plus 120 plus 24. When you do that, you get 3,144. Do you agree? How many partial products do we have now? Three. Three. Okay. Now let's do the standard algorithm. Oops and see if we can find those same partial products. So when we do the standard algorithm, we have 524 times 136. We're going to start by doing 524 times 6. Okay, what's 4 times 6? Six? 6 times 4? 24. 24. What's 6 times 2? Plus 2. 14. What's 6 times 5? Plus 1. Oh, what do you know? See that? Okay. Next, we would move on to do 30 times 524. Yes? So we're going to, we know there's automatically going to be one factor of 0. So put your placeholder 0 there. If you forget your placeholder 0, you will make mistakes. Yes? What's 3 times 4? Okay. What's 3 times 2? Plus 1. What's 3 times 5? So the partial product is 15,720. Hey, look, there it is. Okay. Now let's move on to do 524 times 100. How many placeholder zeros do I have to do when I'm, do I have to add when I'm working in the hundreds? Okay, so there's my first placeholder zero. There's my second placeholder zero. What's 1 times 4? What's 1 times 2? What's 1 times 5? Oh, look at that. To no one's surprise there is the same partial product. Do you agree? How do I find the total product? I add it all up. How many ones do I have all together? How many tens do I have all together? 
How many hundreds do I have altogether? Okay. How many thousands do I have altogether? Eleven. How many ten thousands do I have altogether? So my final product is seventy-one thousand two hundred sixty-four. Again, we can show how all the partial products from this um, area model match up to this partial products from the standard algorithm. Now, let's check back at our estimation. We thought it should be pretty close to 50,000. Is 71,264 in the same ballpark in terms of place value? Does it have all the same place values? Is it bigger than 50,000? Is that what we expected? So with your estimation, you can feel pretty confident that our answer at least is in the right zone.